proceed any further. I actually forgot to tell you about this one that we need to record this for quality and training purposes. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Thank you. All right. So going back, uh, I have excluded it in, or I mean, I have removed the exclusion in my antivirus uh, uh, layer and also in the groups. So I will extract this now with my antivirus on here. Um, just to show you in my settings. Oh, sorry. Uh, here, so antivirus is on. So the moment I actually extract this file in my desktop, it should be deleted automatically. In just a few seconds, uh, my antivirus security layer will detect this file uh, present in my desktop, then it will be automatically deleted. There you go. Okay. okay. So now, um, it's actually the same as disabling the antivirus, but the problem is in my profile, the antivirus is by default uh, enabled. So I'm gonna have to make the exclusion, right? So I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna add the exclusion again. And I'm gonna run the WannaCry. Okay, and same goes for here. I'm just gonna look for the malware variable. All right, and I'm saving it. Okay, in just a few seconds, uh, the ITSM agent should communicate to our ITSM portal. Uh, let's give it up for maybe five seconds. Okay, I think it's okay now. So I'm gonna extract this file in here, and it should not be deleted by now since I have made the exclusion. Okay. Uh, just. A quick one, how does the agent update its policies? Is it, how, which way around is it? Does the agent look for the policy update or is it pushed out to the agent? What do you mean? Uh, you mean the profile? So, so yeah, so when you've made a cha change on the profile on ITSM, uh -huh. how does the, uh, the agent on, the, on your machine know there's been a change? Which, how does the update work? Does it look for the update or does it force it down to the client? It, ref it refreshes uh, every time. So this is my agent in here. If I click yeah. about, you will see the last communication time in here. So yeah, if you want to know if it's fully, you know, synchronized to your portal, you can just open up yeah. this page. Ah, uh, right. You can check that. Fine. I say okay. Yeah. And uh, the short, uh, the shortest way of refreshing the agent is by clicking, left clicking the icon in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not oh, like that, you know. That, 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 that refreshes it, does it, the policies? Yeah, that's for the client's end. But for you, as the administrator, what you're going to have to do to refresh uh, whatever you have sent into the device is you have to yeah. click re refresh device information. Right. Okay. Got it. Okay. But, you know, usually if, if there's no network interruption, it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't have yeah. any, any interruption. Um, okay. But, yeah, if just in case, you can use this button. Okay. All right, so going back, um, I'm gonna extract, actually I have extracted it already, but until now it's still there, which means that the exclusions that we made took effect already, okay? So yeah, okay. what I'm gonna do is, since we're trying to catch a uh, unknown file uh, or a zero-day malware, since that's the uh, type of malware that is constantly infecting our uh, clients, uh, we're gonna have to change something in this file because this is already a known bad file. So what if an unknown yeah. file comes in? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this hash manager file in here, which is not mm -hmm. going to change anything in my file. It's not gonna change the value, it's not gonna change the name, but it's gonna change a file property, which is MD5. Okay. okay? So I'm yeah. gonna look here for the cryptic, and uh, I will start changing the MD5. All right, so this is the old MD5, okay. and this is now uh, the new MD5 for this file. All right? Okay. Do you want me to run the WannaCry as well? Um, you, you can do if you like. Okay, sure. So I will extract it here. Okay. And I'll do the same thing. Add files, and a cry, and change the MD5. All 
All right. So next thing that I'm going to do is just to make sure that you know we have a lot of changes that we made in the file. I will also run this hex editor uh, application, which has the ability to add more you know um, information to the file without changing its value. All right. So oh, okay. I will look for the cryptic. All right. So you familiar with this uh, um, hexadecimal yeah. codes? Um, yeah, I've seen it before. I'm not an expert, but mm. yeah, but you know that's uh, how it usually looks like. But we can actually put any yeah. any uh, characters in here, just a proof okay. that this is uh, you know a completely different file. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna save this one, and I'll do the same for the WannaCry. Oh, sorry, I closed it out. Open WannaCry. So, so, so by doing that itself, will that not alter any of the, the files inside of the actual? Sorry. Um, by doing this, changing the the values, will that not change any of the data within the actual application? No, it's not. Uh, it is no. actually changing the data within the application, but it's not you know yeah. running in your machine because technically, okay. the application that is doing the changes is this hex editor, not this one. Yeah. Right, but if okay. it's a kind of uh, like uh, Microsoft Excel file that has a macro, uh, you know, commands in in it, it will still yeah. call uh, the uh, macro execution, uh, and it will you know run some uh, bad commands in your system, if that's right, what it's okay. meant to do. So yeah, but yeah. technically this is not going to execute the uh, file. All right, okay. so I'm saving it now. All right, so we have completely changed uh, these two files right now, uh, but I'm going to start with uh, the cryptic. Okay, so I have opened up the task manager, and I will also open up this button here is the containment. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to run the cryptic right now. So we should see in here into the task manager that the cryptic is running. There you go. Yep. Okay. okay. So in a few seconds, the containment should catch it there. All right. So uh -huh. this cryptic malware, as you can see, the icon of this file looks like, you know, a regular document file. Or yep. it, it is actually like, uh, what do you call that, QuickBooks uh, QuickBooks file. I'm not okay. sure, but yeah, it has a green border on top, but yeah, it, it somehow looks like a document file. All right, so this is the very first thing that it's going to do. Uh, it's going to open up a WordPad file, which is like a cover-up page for what it's really doing at the background. So um, this document uh, file was pulled up by the cryptic malware, but it is still being contained. So the indication that the file is being contained or the application is being contained is when there's a green border around a window. Okay. Right. I see. Okay. So if ever that there comes a time that um, you run something and it opened up a Google Chrome browser and there's a green border around the window, it doesn't mean that the Chrome is you know unknown. There's right. also a possibility that it is an unknown file if uh, Google, you know, carelessly uh, deployed an update to Google Chrome and did not, you know, update the signatures. But for this one, uh, you know, this is the best example that even other applications can be contained if it was deployed by by an unknown file, like this one. I I, I uh, ran the cryptic and it opened the WordPad, which is a known file, but it is uh, Contained, All right? This is okay. to prevent these applications to to you know do something bad in the system. So as you can see, I closed out the WordPad file, but the cryptic is still running at the back end. It's still running in my in my uh, task manager. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. So that means that the uh, the containment technology or the uh, the Komodo client security was successfully able to uh, seize this file. All right. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to stop this from running. I'm going to do something more crazy than that. 
um, I'm going to bring up the task manager again. So what I'm going to do this time is just to show you how powerful the auto containment is, I'm going to turn off everything. Okay. I'll turn off antivirus. Okay. I'll turn off firewall. I'll turn off virus scope. I'll turn off uh, even website filtering. So it's not, you know, really related. So I'm just going to leave the one uh, layer of protection, which is the containment. All right. Now, I'm going to have to do this quick because uh, the profile will bring back the settings. But I'm going to run these two applications now. Okay. Okay. With just the auto containment on. All right. So in just a few seconds, we should see the cryptic. There you go. And we should also see, actually, it's not going by the WannaCry name. It's going for, it's going by a different name. But as you can see in the containment, the WannaCry was contained already. Okay. Yeah. And you will see the rating here says it's unknown. Okay. okay. So even without all the security features on, uh, our Komodo is still preventing this malware to run into, into the machine. Um, there, this is the cryptic screen, and I'm going to prove to you that nothing is actually uh, affected in my computer. So I have this one uh, document file. This is considered as a document file, right? It's a PDF uh -huh. file, all right? Okay. So this should not open since I am running the cryptic here right now. This should have been encrypted, right? Okay. So I'm going to put it in my browser since I have, uh, you know, a low resolution in my virtual machine. So it's not letting me open it up by just double clicking it. So I'm dragging it into my browser. There you go. I'm still able to open it up. Okay. Okay. So that means that uh, the Komodo client security, uh, though you are seeing it running in your task manager, it's still preventing it from doing something bad in your system. Because it's just you okay. know running virtually. Yeah. Okay. All right. So right now, as you can see, the Komodo client security uh, is uh, secured now because it's uh, synced into the setting of my profile. So that's why antivirus is back on firewall, Firescope, and other security layers. But yeah, that's pretty much how it really works. It's uh, checking the unknown files, protecting you from you know making any damage in this system. Okay. Okay. So, do you have any questions about about how it works? Um, no, no. It seems pretty straightforward. Um, I've got some pressed uh, questions on the pricing. Oh, um, sure. of, of the component, but uh, I'm assuming maybe I'll need to speak to Parth on that one. Right? Yeah, uh, Parth should be able to help help you with that. Okay, that's good. Oh, I, I actually, I've got a couple of other questions, but it's not related to the endpoint. Um, so you, whether you can answer that now, I'm not sure. Too sure. Go ahead. Um, um, firstly, I've got. How do we change? I know you can change the actual, the you know, the monitoring profile, mm -hmm. um, like the default profile in ITSM. Um, can you actually change the, the settings in the default profile, or do you have to create? Because what I had to do today, for example, mm -hmm. I, I created uh, a cloned. Um, you know the default profile, and then I, I managed to edit and change the settings. You know to do with um, the performance monitoring and the, the memory uh, thresholds. Well, yeah, you should. You will be able to uh, clone the, or you can just clone this uh, default profiles here, and you can just cancel yeah. the uh, the default uh, profile. For example, this is your current default profile which is, you know, what's really happening the moment you sign up with Komodo One. But you can just cancel the default uh, status for this one, right? Because the default right. status will make your profile applied to any devices that is coming in, all right? Okay. But you so, can have multiple profiles if we wanted a profile for maybe workstations and a profile for servers. Yeah, definitely. You assign. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, that, that, that's fine. Yeah, like um, you are compartmentalizing the uh, the profiles, the profile sections. Yeah, yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah. Yes, and that, okay, that's good. Um, I've 
I've had a look at the, some of the procedures, what you can run. Um, mm-hmm. but I've managed to run some of them, but I've not managed to run some others. For example, um, I've managed to clear um, application event logs on a on a uh, remote machine, which worked fine. Um, mm-hmm. But then I tried to um, empty some temporary files, and that didn't seem to work. I was just wondering... Um, well, I'm wondering if, if um, you need to do anything, any configuration changes. Okay. What was that again? The You mean the uh, uh, cleanup? Yeah, temporary, temporary files. Yeah, it's one of the procedures. Um, if you go into... Um, which one is it? So, copy file. Ah, oh, that one there. The third one down. So, delete uh, temporary files. Um, in the previous page. Yeah, just go back back a step. And there it is. There, third third option down. So delete temporary files. Okay, let's see. So, what are you expecting uh, for this procedure? Well, what location of the, is it? See, like for example, uh, C Windows Temp, mm. or will it clear um, like um, C colon users? You know, local settings temporary files which where does it look for its temporary files I think this is only I think this is only referring to the local users uh, temp files so that's in the uh, let me just open this up percent temp percent okay I think this is what it is deleting the local user temporary file but if you are also if you also want to remove uh, the the general user yeah, yeah, Windows temp files and I guess prefetch. I think we will have to uh, create a different uh, a different script for that. Okay, that's that's fine. So that's okay. Uh, when yeah. we execute the actual script and it asks for the machine name, uh, which is fine. Um, it also you need to put another command in. Here we go. Yeah. So if I select you select, select a device that you run as a system user. Mm-hmm. Um, then there's another, another option. You, you need to tell it if it's a patch or... Oh, okay. Well, uh, for that, because we have three different uh, types of procedures in here. We have uh, right. script, we have the patch, and we have the third-party yeah. patch procedure. So if you were right. creating a... Uh, if you are trying to create a a schedule and you type in the name of the uh, the procedure into the box it may give you multiple uh, multiple types of procedure yeah hmm. yeah but there's a bracket and tells you that it's a script it's a patch or a third-party patch so maybe uh, let me just uh, open up something okay. here uh, there you go so you mean like this you have script and, uh, yeah, so if you just type in, uh, I've been using patch, for example. I think there's a few different options. Yeah. Um, you get critical patch, then you get security patch. So if I've selected a bunch of patches and it's, it's both of critical and uh, maintenance, what which one would I select? Does it matter? Or... Well, it's up to you. Uh, the critical patch is, you know, just the critical patch updates, but you can create your own. Yeah. So w- when we go here to the procedures, it's better if you just customize your own uh, procedure uh, yeah. or just clone it. Uh, so we can type in test123321. I think I have many test123 there. So, <laughs> All right. So, yeah, all of this are disabled, but you can just check the types of the updates that you would want to deploy. If it's a combination uh, right, of critical yeah. security and stuff like that. Okay. Right. I understand. Yeah, yeah. 